Yo, Mr. Kyle at Myers Mathematics. It's September 14th, so that means we're going to do four videos. It's an even number day. Um, and by the way, if you've been following these lately, if you've been watching through these um, and you're wondering why I'm doing four videos on even number days, um, the very first video I did explained um, before September came, the very last, I should say, the last video in August explained this whole series that I've been doing. It's a September series on factoring where I do every factoring problem um, as long as the middle number does not exceed negative um, 10 or 10 and then the ending number doesn't uh, go past negative 20 or 20. Um, well, almost everyone because at some point it becomes very, very repetitive. Um, but yeah, so anyways, today we're doing four videos, uh, or sorry, so, uh, four problems. We've got x squared plus 5x minus 14, x squared minus 5x minus 14, which you can see here, and x squared plus 6x plus 5, and x squared minus 6x plus 5, which you can see here. So we've got four videos, four videos that we're doing today. So let's dive right in. We've got x squared plus 5x minus 14. And let's see if we can factor this thing. So the trick to factoring is to take the last number, which includes the sign, and you want two things that multiply to give you that number. So obviously any number can be factored into 1 and that number. So 1 and 14 is a possibility. Um, now, one of these numbers has to be negative because I need a negative 14 when I multiply. So since I'm trying to get a positive number when I add, or in this case subtract, I want to make the 14 positive and the 1 negative. Because if I do 14 minus 1, or if I read it from left to right here, negative 1 plus 14, then I get positive 13. So it's a positive number. Unfortunately, positive 13 is not the same thing as positive 5, so I have to keep going. All right? Now there's only one other group of things that I multiply to give you 14, and that's 2 and 7. All right? And of course the 7 has to be positive, 2 has to be negative. And that does work. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. So that multiplies to give me the last number. Check. And the other check is negative 2 plus 7 is positive 5, which gives me the middle number. So double check. I need to check two of those things off my list in order to complete the problem. And I did. So now I'm done. All I do is add an x to the front of that, x to the front of that, add some parentheses in there, and we're good to go move on to the next one. So the next one is just like it, right? x squared minus 5x though, minus 14. So x squared minus 5x minus 14. So it's going to end up being pretty much the same thing. Obviously 1 and 14 is still not going to work because I just need a negative 5. I don't need a completely different number, I just need a negative 5 instead of a positive 5. So 1 and 14 is still not going to work. Um, but 2 and 7 will work as long as I make the 7 negative and the 2 positive, right? 2 minus 7 is negative 5, or positive 2 minus 7, or negative 7 plus 2. Um, you can say it a couple different ways. And of course, it still multiplies to give me negative 14. So double check. And I throw x is in front, and I'm done. All right? So now let's look at the second half of our video, or I put videos again. I meant to say problems. I keep saying videos. Problems. All right, so for the second half of our problems here, we've got x squared plus 6x plus 5 and x squared minus 6x plus 5. So let's do it. x squared plus 6x plus 5. x, oh, x squared plus 6x plus 5. So this time we do, well, I mean, the, the method is still the same each time, right? You always want to multiply two numbers to get the last number. Um, but this time 5 is a prime number, so there's only two things that multiply to give you 5, as long as you're not using fractions or decimals or whatnot. Um, 1 and 5, that's it, right? Or technically negative 1 and negative 5 would work, right? But I want to get a positive 6 when I add, so I want this to be positive and this to be positive. So 1 times 5 is 5, and 1 plus 5 is 6, so there we go. Throw an x in front of each one, and I'm done. 
And then, of course, for the last one here, do the same thing. You're going to do the same thing, but with a minus sign. So minus 6x plus 5. Right? So same thing's going to happen here. I want to have a 1 and a 5. But this time, I need there to be a minus. I need there to be a minus because I need to get negative 6 when I add. Since 5 is a positive number, I'm going to need two numbers of the same sign, in this case, negative 1 and negative 5, because if I multiply two negatives, I get a positive. Whenever you have a positive last number here, you're always going to end up adding to get the middle number, negative 6. It's just how it works. So negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5, and then when I add negative 1 and negative 5, Negative 1 minus 5 is the same thing as negative 1 plus negative 5, which is negative 6. So that works. And just throw an x in front, parentheses, x in front, and I'm done.